Welcome back to Sailing Cedar McClyde. In this one, I do a bit more solo sailing around the Ketchikan area as I wait for my friend Alex to arrive. In a little spot called Ice House Cove, I rafted up with my friends on SV Vile Hour, and then I head across to Annette Bay where aliens come in in the middle of the night, and then I head back into Ketchikan and pick up Alex, and we start to head south back towards Canada. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're enjoying the series, make sure you hit subscribe so you see all the next episodes coming up. Okay, so I spent a night here um, in this little spot called Clam Cove. It's a pretty nondescript bay. It's surrounded by a few homes, a bit of uh, sort of derelict, falling down boat sheds and stuff, um, but right across from Ketchikan. So I just popped over here instead of spending another night in the marina and spending the money. Um, pretty peaceful though. Um, not a whole lot of wake. I think I'm pretty much free of um, the wake coming from the adjacent channel, which is much more busy. Um, so it wasn't bad. It's been drizzly most of the day. Um, but just now the sun has come out. It's four o'clock p.m. I got a few days here to uh, chill out before Alex joins me. Alex Sobolski, a new Alex, um, and we start heading south. Um, so I am going to head down south a little bit, just about seven miles um, to a little poorly charted bay. So I'll go really slowly into it, but it looks pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's go for a sail. <laughs> Okay, successful, successful as can be. We got the anchor, the uh, anchor came up nice and smooth, and then uh, right as soon as it came up, the boat just sort of turned into the perfect angle to get the Genoa out. So I rolled it out and I got the main up, and now I'm just starting to pick up speed as I enter this little channel. I'm gonna short tack up for the next hour probably, but the current's gonna be helping me out a lot here, so I'll get good angles. Really nice to not use the engine, I love doing that. It's one of my, one of my favorite things. Short tacking up uh, Tonks Narrows here. Uh, lots of current helping me out here, so I'm, uh, I'm going sideways really fast actually. Um, so this is going to be pretty easy. Probably a couple of knots in my favorite here. <laughs> hang of this solo sailing after doing a week of it uh, down Stevens Passage. Um, it's just kind of nice to do it again here. It was really nice having uh, Ben and Rachel on board though. Nice having crew for sure. Fun, fun challenge. I'm doing like 20 degree tacks or 25 degree tacks right now. Is the current helping me out so much? Buzzing past uh, marker five here. Nice angles, current super helping me out. Um, I've only done, had to do a couple tacks here. So the wind totally died and I'm drifting towards the rocks. So I am going to mortar for a bit. Hopefully it comes back up. I think it's shifting to north is what it's forecast to do, but I'm only four miles from my anchorage. So likely just gonna pot on over there. So yeah, gonna cruise up um, to Ice House Cove here. I'm gonna go raft up um, with my uh, friends on SV Violet Hour. Uh, these guys have been uh, hanging out in Alaska for I think oh, two years straight right now. Um, they lived in uh, Juneau for the winter. They're heading back down to Puget Sound for this winter then coming back up. They love the lifestyle up here and I don't blame them. And they, do, um, they do some blogging as well as um, they leave very good uh, reviews on Navionics that I always appreciate when I come across theirs because they're detailed and accurate compared to some that are on there um, that are quite misleading or, or just downright wrong. All right, sun's back out. Um, I'm just mortar sailing the last moment here. Um, and then gonna be entering um, into Ice House Cove right by Catch Can. So I better put the camera down and get the boat ready for that. Um, gotta put my fenders back out and all that stuff. 
as so often happens, the wind did come up nicely as I approached Iso's Cove, but I just mortared on in into the very poorly charted anchorage, as you can see here, but it was just fine. I just took my time and watched that sound really closely and there was no problems. Rafting up when there's a bit of a breeze or current is always a bit spicy, but I had the good helping hands of both Patrick and Natalie to catch my lines that I had set out ready to go as I approached their boat and everything went just fine. Good morning from Ice House Cove, just a little bit south of Ketchikan, about seven miles. Um, I'm just having a relaxed morning. It was a little drizzly that, earlier, but now it's uh, it's quit and it's kind of getting sunny out, sort of. Um, so I'm just going to do a little video editing, a little tidying up, and uh, I think I'll go fishing in a little bit um, just outside the bay here and get out on the dinghy. I'm uh, rafted up uh, to my friends on SV Violet Hour. They're out fishing right now. Um, but we had a nice evening last night and they shared some of the salmon they caught um, right when I got back, got in here. So that was pretty nice to, to raft up and then have a nice meal. Uh, so thanks so much for that, guys. Just going out for a little fish and phone call outside the cove here. I just spent uh, like an hour chit-chatting on the phone where the cell reception is good here. I was just talking to Alex, who's going to be flying in in a couple days. Um, and just making our final plans there and talking about that we'll do VHF from the airport to uh, CJ McLeod from him. He'll have his handheld and then I'll go and pick him up in the dinghy so that'll be fun. And uh, Violet Hour is getting ready to leave so I'm going to blast back there and um, de-raft from them and get onto the mooring ball myself. There's Natalie and Patrick getting ready to head off on Violet Hour. Um, I rafted up with them and for the night on this mooring ball here, and now I'm gonna hang out here. And uh, they're heading south. Um, gonna catch this nice northwesterly out there. And um, then we'll hopefully meet up a little later um, down towards Prince Rupert or something, or maybe even sail alongside each other uh, down across Dixon Entrance. We'll see if I can catch up. Bye guys. Bye. <laughs> All right, so this is a nice place to hang out with this mooring ball, but the mooring ball has this big metal thing sticking out, and it definitely could hit the hull of my boat in the if it just happened to come the wrong way. And it has the big rubber tires have already hit my boat and have left big ugly tire marks. So I'm gonna go for a little evening sail across the way to a net bay which is three miles across and then it's like two miles into the bay. Um, but the current is in my favor to, up, up to that point. And there's a bit of a breeze, so I could be able to, should be able to sail most of it. Um, but I don't want that big chunk of metal hitting my hull. That would suck. Um, and the wind is kind of light, so with the current swirling around and some waves or whatever, it could, could happen. Um, maybe if I had like a pipe or a chunk of wood or something, I could kind of fasten it to the rope and be able to keep that away, but I don't really feel like messing around with that. And then I can go check out a new anchorage anyways, so that's something different to do, so that's what I'm gonna do now. I have left Ice House Cove on my way to Annette Bay now, getting away from that mooring ball. Super nice sailing right out of the gate, cruising along at four or five knots, uh, pretty nice angle, so should be a relatively short sail, nice little thing to do this evening. And I'll anchor up uh, in Annette Cove. It's going to be northwest for a little longer. So it might be a little windy in there initially, but then it's going to swap to southeast, so it should be really nice overnight. Just had some total bozo sport fisher. Um, not acknowledged that I was coming, and I, he was going to cut. He's coming up on my port side, and I'm sailing. And I was trying to stay clear of the Grand Princess here. And he uh, he didn't want to change his course at all. He just yells at me. I got I got shit down there. His fishing gear, absolute clown. You gotta watch out for him. I, we were gonna collide if I didn't uh, do a tack right away. But at least he keeps on trolling for his salmon. Cruising 
up uh, cruise ship alley here. Tongues and Arrows inside. Um, I'm gonna be able to make my turn soon to Net Bay and then downwind sail down to Anchor. I think it's gonna be pretty protected in there. It's kind of a west, put a westerly uh, um, angle to the wind right now, so it should be good in there. Maybe even get a beam reach in there. I've rounded Race Point into Annette Bay. Um, it was a little bit tight there. The current kept me away as I'd hoped. And now I'm on a nice beam reach, uh, heading straight into the bay here. So just kind of a notch I could go that's just up here, but it looks like it uh, could be rocky. So I think I'll just go right to the head of the bay, which is two miles down. And I should have a nice, comfortable night there. Pink salmon are going berserk around here. That one's like, wow. Anchored up now. The wind and current were sort of opposing each other, so it was kind of weird of, didn't really know which direction to back into, but it's supposed to turn to south, so I, I backed up towards the north. Uh, it took me a moment to get it to stick. Initially, I put out about four to one, and it was uh, dragging a little bit, but I, I let out to about six to one, and then it stuck nice and uh, nice and hard. Um, so yeah, I'm safe and sound right here in a net bay, off this little creek behind me, sort of. I can't really see it, I can hear it. And uh, there shows a little a little mat, or there's a little pond um, just upstream from here. Um, yeah, it's a really nice spot. Um, I can pretty much see Catch Can. I got a good cell phone signal in here. It's kind of a good spot to wait around if you need to work or whatever. Reach the outside world, um, but be within five miles of Catch Can. And yeah, so I'll hang out here till tomorrow around 10 in the morning. That's when the tides will turn in my favor and, and draw me up into uh, Catch Can. Then I'll go back to Bar Harbor, take our laundry, take our grocery shopping, fuel up a little bit. I probably only used like 20 liters, so I'll probably just get a jug from the gas station, save the whole fuel dock hustle. Um, yeah, it's a fine spot here in a net bay. Well, my uh, peaceful little anchorage apparently is a popular spot for fishing boats coming in at 11 at night and anchoring on top of me. And another one might be coming in yet. Yeah, when I got here, it was all to myself. But there's Buddy there, and there's one right there. He just turned his sodium off, thankfully. Morning from Annette Bay, uh, about six or seven miles south of Ketchikan. Um, had a pretty peaceful night here, aside from a couple of those fish boats coming in with their lights blaring, um, but it was all good. Um, they left early and didn't wake me up um, as they did. So there's a nice southerly blowing, just as forecasted. Looks like a really nice opportunity for a sail off the anchor again here. Um, I mean, I'll be able to just take it up and, and drift right out of the bay, um, but I'll get sails up and, and uh, head on up to catch can so I'm I am underway now um, pulling the anchor um, without the engine went nice and smooth as usual um, the wind is pretty light hope it's gonna come up I see some more behind me a um, little looks pretty light up ahead here but I'm cruising along at oh just a little over a knot more towards one and a half um, but it won't take much to get me going on this nice flat water, so we'll just be patient, but all good. Just a little very light drizzle and this um, this kind of high fog marine cloud right now, but a lot nicer than I was expecting. I thought it was supposed to be pouring rain all day, so I'll take it. Here's the, uh, I think they're kind of doing the king crab sort of tours for the cruise ship folks. They were good enough to call me just to let me know their intention, which is nice to see. Um, so I'm just gonna keep on um, my little slow course here, and they're gonna pick up a crab pot to, I guess, demonstrate to the uh, the tourists um, what it's like being on a big crabbing boat or something. Scoring a little free education on the crabbing around here. The uh, Aleutian Ballad crabbing tour. <laughs> and it looks like the wind is finally gonna pick up for me here. Should be going in a second. When you're near, catch can. <laughs> so there's actually like uh, kind of bleachers seating area on the one side of the ship. 
where there's the crane to bring up the crab traps and everyone's checking out the crabs they brought up. Maybe they're having a snack, I'm not sure. Pretty funny though. <laughs> Sailing in this way where I wait for the wind to tell me where to go and I don't just revert to the mortar the second I'm going too slow or going slow. Um, it, uh, I find it so much more satisfying in just so many different ways, like not using the engine is pretty cool. Getting to listen to nature and listen to the weather, um, I think it's just so much more satisfying than just turning the engine on and you can't hear anything other than the engine. Um, and you just miss out on a lot of things. You, there's been so many times when I've seen whales that I probably wouldn't have seen if I had just motored past. Um, beautiful skylines, you just take a minute to contemplate what's around you. Um, yeah, I think it's just such a nice way to do it. I know not everyone has the time to drift around like I've had the luxury of being able to do this summer, um, but if you ever have the chance and the wind dies and there's no ferries around, I, I don't know, I'd encourage everyone just to wait and just, uh, as long as you're not gonna run to the shore, just wait and see if the wind comes back. Wait an hour, wait two hours. Um, and you just know, you never know what you're gonna see while you're contemplating and waiting for the wind and maybe getting frustrated, but fighting that frustration off and just embracing what is given to you by the atmosphere and by, by nature. Um, I just think it's a really nice way to do it. But enough of that uh, cheesy stuff. My contemplations while I'm sailing alone here. I have a bunch of saners to dodge up in front of me. Okay, the wind is on. Bunch of saners here, but it looks like there's a path for me straight ahead. Um, yeah, this is really nice. I'm putting five and a half knots all of a sudden after going a knot or so, knot or two, um, for the last basically hour that it took me to get that mile. Um, but now I'm cruising along. Maybe it was only 45 minutes. But uh, a little drizzly here, a bit foggy. Um, but it's pretty good enough phase. I got like a mile of this right now. Just keep an eye out. Yeah. Here's a purse saner bringing in its catch. They spread that huge net out with that little tender there. Um, and then, then they started bringing it in. I'm not seeing any fish yet. I can see a whole bunch of jellyfish. Some fishers told me a name for them. I forgot what it was. Um, O's or something, or oopsies. Because they fall on their heads as they're coming up that, uh, that big unit right there. There's a gill netter up ahead there. It looks like his net's behind me, so gonna be in front of them. The wind is still pretty squirrely, but it's starting to stabilize a bit here and I should be able to blast for a catch can real shortly. Um, but lots of action out here right now. All right, just uh, outside of Bar Harbor South here. Um, they got me a slip that's gonna have me being blown off a little bit, but should be fine. Wind's kind of just gusted up for a minute, but it seems to have come down now, so all good. Okay, I'm going to pick up Alex at the airport now. We made contact on VHF. And yeah, so perfect weather for a dinghy ride. Hopefully there's some wind a bit later though. We are underway on a noisy catch can. Alex is getting his first chance on the wheel here, right out of the gate. Nice little breeze. We'll see how it goes, or we might be having a bit of a hard time tacking against the current and everything else and all the traffic, but we'll we'll have a try. We'll just sail for a bit, let the current kind of subside for a bit. It's kind of max, max current right now, I think. So, yeah, practice tacking. Yeah, Alex rocking the helm. Yeah, it's a nice little breeze right now. We've got the current not in our favor, but we're doing pretty nice angles right here. So I think we just heard a cruise ship might be coming up the channel, so that might damper things, but we'll, uh, we'll see what we can do here. Just get to like let the sails out a bit. Well, we're just uh, about five miles south of Ketchikan now, five or six, and out by Ice House Cove and the areas I was at the other uh, couple days ago. Um, but looks like the wind it might die off a little bit up ahead, so we'll see what we get. Current should be in our favor, so we might get to just kind of drift along and do some fishing. Um, but nice weather, it's the uh, rain's kind of staying to the north of us, and yeah, we're kind of almost dead in almost downwind now as the wind has wrapped around here. 
It's about 4.30 now and the wind looks pretty light down here behind us. The current's against us, we're going real slow. So I think we're just gonna head into uh, Hassler Harbor, I think it's called. Curious name, I'm interested to learn why that name is that. Um, but we've had nice sailing, downwind sailing, surprise downwind. Barely used the motor today. Um, Alex has traveled a whole pile. Um, so he uh, he traveled from Eastern Canada to Canmore and then over out here, so he's barely slept. And I think this is just the good thing to do. Get a good restful night. All right, so here we are in Hassler Harbor. Uh, no sign of the explosives storage that the coast pilot noted and also the sort of fake robot profile that has spammed Southeast Alaska with goofy reviews on avionics. They mentioned poor holding. There's really good holding here. This is a really nice anchorage and really scenic. I'm a little exposed to the north, but there is this island in front of us and we could have anchored further into the bay there and got more protection, but it's supposed to be kind of quite calm tonight, so why bother? We get this nice view here. Alex and I had a really nice first evening aboard on this leg of the trip. We did some fishing, which was successful, some really tasty rockfish, and it was a perfectly calm night, which allowed Alex to catch up on his sleep before we headed down to Foggy Bay, then across Dixon Entrance. Coming up next time on Sailing Sea Drew McClyde, after a bit of light wind, we get some good sailing down to Foggy Bay, Alaska, where we do a little dinghy exploring in the evening time. After a good start out of the gate out of Foggy Bay, the wind dies off, but that allows us to have some successful fishing. The wind does pick up as we rage across Dixon Entrance and back into Canada. The good sailing continues all the way to Prince Rupert, where we clear into customs and get ready for the next leg of the trip down the north coast of British Columbia. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, please do. Bye for now.